Number eight says a car initially traveling eastward turns north by traveling in a circular path at uniform speed as in the figure. The length of the arc, ABC, is 249 meters and the car completes the turn in 33 seconds. Part A, determine the car's speed, and B, what is the magnitude and direction of the acceleration when the car is at point B? So the first part is, uh, let's go ahead and write down what we, what we know. We know that the arc length, so the, the, the distance, let's, let's write it as distance or arc length. We'll, we'll write arc length. Arc length equals 249 meters. So on that road, that's like from, from this point to this point, this length right here is 249 meters. And the, the time it took, so time equals 33 seconds, 33.0 seconds. And so we can, we can find average speed because average speed was the, the V initial plus V final divided by 2 and, and this multiplied by the time equals equals the distance so the change of of D the distance and so if V initial and V final are the same so we're, we're assuming that the speed of the car does not change uh, then whenever you add it up, V initial and V final will be the same, so you would say V velocity times time equals distance. And so you divide distance divided by time. Well, the distance was 249 meters. The time was 33 seconds. So the, the velocity, the, the, or not the, the velocity, but we'll just say the speed. The speed equals 7.54 five four meters per second and so this is not the car's velocity because it, if you look the the change in in x or is is this and so the car traveled this uh, this absolute distance but you know, so if we did velocity it would be much less but if we do um, the total distance we get speed so speed being a scalar quantity velocity being a, a vector quantity and so we know this the speed and now it says what is the magnitude and direction of the acceleration when the car is at point B and so we if the speed stays the same the acceleration is completely due to change of direction so we're talking about the uh, centripetal acceleration so we're, we're trying to find the centripetal acceleration that equals V squared over R and again on this V is going to be uh, so if I was writing the vector quantity quantity I would put an arrow over it but since V is uh, does not have an arrow over it we're, we're talking about speed and so we, we know what the velocity is we just sound, uh, found that they're the speed 7.54 meters per second but we and this is supposed to be this is supposed to be squared I don't know why I put the v, the two so low so v squared over r but what we don't know is what r is and so we can solve for r because we know that the angular displacement times r equals equals s where s is the arc length so so s is the arc length so 200 and 249 meters to be exact is is what s is and we know that it's given in the picture that uh, we can so that we can solve what the angular displacement is but we have to convert degrees to radians so I'm going to go ahead and try to draw sort of a visual for you so that you understand what I'm what I'm looking at here's the the path length and so here's my y-axis here's my x-axis and so the acceleration at any point on this arc is going to be the exact same. And the reason it specifies, so this is A, B, C, and it, and it has an arrow here with, with 35 degrees is drawn here. And so the reason it specifies A, B, C is because at point B, if I, the magnitude at any point along this arc is going to be the same, but the direction at point B is specific. So the direction it of 
the direction of travel is always at um, 90 degrees from my radius. I'm always traveling 90 degrees from my radius. Um, that's my that's the direction of my of my um, tangential velocity. And so I draw that here, so we know that that's 90 degrees, and then this must be um, 180. So this must be 180 minus 90 minus 35. So this angle is 55 degrees. And so we haven't done anything to radians yet. So what we're doing right now, so I want to imagine that B is my new x, my, my temporary x-axis. And so this thing wants to know the, the direction counterclockwise from the x-axis. So um, it, the direction that I'm being pulled, it would be, would be this direction right here, this whatever angle this is right here. So we, we could say that this angle is the same as this angle, so that's 55 plus 90, so plus 90. So my direction is 100 and 145 degrees counterclockwise from the x-axis. So that's the direction of my acceleration. And now we're in a position where we can find the mag we can so you can plug that in as the second part of part B and now we just need to find the magnitude now uh, just to make it clear the the um, centripetal acceleration is always towards the center is always towards the the center of the radius so wherever you're at if you can point towards the center of that circle that's always the centripetal acceleration and so that's why I had to find this length because this is my x-axis and so this is my this is my um, angle from the x-axis and the, the other way to do that would have been to just say that that this angle and this angle uh, right here are the same so that would be 35 and I could do, I could have done 180 minus 35 and got the same thing and so we're back here where we need to find the radius in order to plug in and get our acceleration. And so we can solve for the radius right here. Um, R equals uh, S over over angular displacement. So R, R equals the angular length over the angular displacement. And so we know what the length is. We need to figure out what the angular displacement was for that entire length. So in this 249 meters, what was the angular displacement? And so what we're going to go back and do is, is actually we're going to look at our curve again. And so here's my y-axis, here's my x-axis. So from this point to this point, this is 90 degrees. So that's 90 degrees. And so in this 240, um, in the 249 meters, you're, he's, he's subtending a, an angle of 90 degrees. And so how many radians is that 90 degrees. And so if we do um, 90 over 180, it would, so we're, it would equal the number of radii, it would equal the, the, so this is going to equal the angular displacement. So we're, we're trying to find angular displacement, so it's going to equal the angular displacement over pi. And so, and the reason is because there are there are pi radians in 180 degrees. So pi radians in 180 degrees. And so we we are just setting up a ratio of the pi to 180 is going to equal this angular displacement over 90. And so when we solve for that, we get we get one half times pi, which is approximately equal to. Um, which is approximately equal to 1.57. So 1.57 is um, is our angular displacement, 1.57 radians. So we come back here and we can say that that the radius equals 249 over over 1.57. And so you plug that in, and you get approximately the the radius is approximately 158. 0.52 meters, so 0.52. So then we come back up here, the velocity over the radius, so that we just said the radius was 158.52 meters, and the velocity, if you remember, was um, 
was 7.5454. So 7.5454 squared. And when you divide that by the 158 squared, divide it by 158, you get that the centripetal acceleration equals approximately 0 0.3591627 uh, And that's in meters per second squared.